And so, after 30 years of hiding in plain sight, the DNA evidence proved that this unassuming old man was indeed the Sunset Park Slayer! But it's not all good news. I mean, this case raises all sorts of privacy questions around DNA evidence. Uh-huh, yeah, sure, whatever. But did you hear what I said? They found the Sunset, Sunset Park, Park Slayer! Slayer. <laughs> Well, that's all for this week's episode of Suspect. Suspect. Tune in next week where we'll be tackling the goriest true crime caper yet. It involves a jilted lover, a rack of lamb, and a freezer. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. Until then, I'm Ellie. And I'm Kat. And whatever you do this week, we hope you get it. <laughs> okay, we've got to get rid of that killer thing. It's way too corny. Do you have a better sign off? Moving on. So, I really wanted to help you out. And let's face it, I also really wanted to know who set that fire. So, come along, come. Oh boy. I may or may not have done a little research on the members of the Liars Club. That is such a dumb name. Can you think of a better one? Moving on. When did you do all of that? American studies majors have a lot of free time. I've divided the suspects into three categories. Not so likely to commit arson, kind of likely to commit arson, and most likely to commit arson. What's with the jalapeno? Oh, it's hot like fire, but not like fire. Got it. Allie, I love this almost as much as the time you made a diorama of the Manson family. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty great, aren't I? Well, I just stalked everybody's socials and then watched all those alibi videos you guys are posting. It's really weird homework, by the way. Moynihan's basically putting you on public trial. It's only trial if you're guilty. The rest of us, he's giving an incredible opportunity to actually apply truth science to a real crime. Great. So I take it you'll be joining the class on their relocation to Oregon. You've always looked so pretty and red. I'm gonna miss you so much. By the way, what makes Moynihan so sure it's arson? He hasn't said, but I'm sure he has a reason. Let's pay close attention to this area. As any mystery reader knows, it's always the least likely that committed the crime. Except for when it's the most likely. Exactly. Hey, why am I kind of likely? Oh, I, I watched your alibi video and it just seemed a little... thin. What's weird about seeing a movie by yourself? I mean, I know you wouldn't do it, but... I like really like popcorn, and you know how I feel about people that aren't you. Okay, okay, okay. So, why don't you just show everybody your ticket stub and then clarify things? Oh my God, Allie, that's a great idea. I'll just show everyone my ticket stub that I saved from a movie I went and saw alone four months ago on a Tuesday night. Where did I put my loneliness scrapbook again? Mm. Oof, I think it's under your bed next to all those empty tubs of popcorn. But look, Kat, I know you're not always the most trusting person, but I want you to know that you can always trust me. Please blink. So what do you think of Naya's alibi? Mm, complete BS. There's no way she was asleep when the fire started. There was a huge party that night in our dorm. No one could sleep with the choir of girls singing off-key to the top 20 songs I never wanted to hear post-high school. That is suspicious. Mm -hmm. Next, most likely, the twins. Together, my second shooter theory. Classic conspiracy trope. Yep, Bella and Benedict are each other's alibis, which is obviously twinception. Mm -hmm. Plus, that day they didn't post a single thing, even with the biggest following on campus. Maybe that day went up in smoke. Ha <laughs> ha, or they just put down their selfie sticks long enough to have a real human interaction for once. I'm surprised you don't suspect Harper more. I mean, she's majoring in social engineering, which is literally the study of manipulating people and places into doing your bidding for you. True, but setting a fire? It just doesn't sound like the Harper I know. Hmm. And what's up with Erica? Why is she in the jalapeno section? We know she was there the night of the fire. She says she was there, but nobody really believes her, because you know, Erica. Erica. <laughs> Got it. And what's their deal? Toxic masculinity personified? The two of them have been friends since freshman year, and as we know, Alvaro is the epitome of news gone wrong, but only starts fires with unproven rumors as far as I can tell. Well, Wilson is your typical rich ringleader douche, tagged by a different girl in every photo. I've actually heard that he's got a huge trust fund and a very important six pack. Yeah, that is important. Mm -hmm.
What do you think about him? <sighs> well, he's a megaloner, and some experts would say it's always the megalonely guy. This has actually been super helpful. I think I have my first suspect. Ooh. Who? Naya, sorry to show up at your door like a weirdo in a 90s sitcom. <laughs> Do you mind if I check out your History of Lying book? I haven't bought mine yet. Sure. I love participating in the sharing economy. <laughs> What's that? Oh, this? <laughs> Female professors are still making less than male professors here. Well, at least now they have a poster. <laughs> How do you feel knowing after we graduate you'll earn 77 cents for every dollar our male classmates take home? I mean, not super great. I know. <laughs> On average, women like us make $600 less a week than the Wilsons of the world. Think about all that late night pizza you could order. I know, we can really level up by eating away our emotions. You know, it really is unfair. You should come to our rally on Sunday. We've got vegan breakfast burritos. I do love breakfast in burrito form. <laughs> Perfect, I'll add you to the group text. Hey, I watched your alibi video. Oh really? Yeah, it was really good. I doubt anyone will see through it. I'm sorry, what? Naya, there was a huge party that night. I mean, no one with ears could have slept through that. And we all know you've had it out with the administration here. Listen, you have no reason to worry. I'm not gonna say anything to anybody. Are you always this rude or is this a special rudeness for people who are trying to help you out? Look, I admire your willingness to go up against the administration and how far you're willing to go for what's right. I'm a strictly non-violent protester. So you're gonna stick with the Sleeping Beauty story? Why don't you tell me where you were during the fire? Look, I really didn't mean to upset you. We're all after the same A. I don't care about the A. I've been petitioning Colvin to stop grading us like cattle since freshman year. Oh, then I guess I'm the only one that cares about the A. Look, why don't we help each other out? I'll let you know where I was the night of the fire if you let me become a guest on Suspect and talk about my farm-raised salmon boycott. I thought farm-raised was the good one. Okay, yeah, you can come on. All right, you guessed it. I wasn't sleeping during the fire. I was in the admin building. But I didn't start the fire. Then what were you doing there? <sighs> Making our bathroom safer for non-binary students. I've been petitioning Colvin to make that change for over a year and I had enough. I didn't want anybody to know because I didn't want to encourage vandalism. That's actually really cool of you. Gee, thanks. Now that I've gotten your approval, can I go back to helping female professors? Hey. Harper, right? Oh, this must look so weird. <laughs> no. This is my friend's room and it's her birthday, so I'm breaking in to decorate for her. Right. Of course you were. Did you need a hand? Oh, I forgot the streamers. Better run, thanks anyway. Excuse me? Cat. Are these your office hours? Office hours are for people who can only function with clear rules. You can come talk to me anytime. Have a seat. I'm delighted that you're in my class, by the way. Big suspect fan. Yeah, right. You're behind. Mm -hmm. 
No, seriously, though, that's super flattering. <laughs> I know you're probably super busy, but if you ever wanted to be a guest on the show, we would love that. How about when I launch Cuff? Yeah, that'd be great. Great. I imagine your true crime knowledge would be very helpful this quarter. I hope so. I actually wanted to ask you a question about the fire. I mean, if you don't mind. Shoot. What makes you think it was arson and not an accident, like the investigators decided? That's pretty bold of you to ask for information I haven't revealed in class yet. Sorry, I... No, no, I like it. Even if it turns out that you started the fire, your asking is a great tactic to throw me. Promise me you'll keep this to yourself for the moment. Yeah, of course. I had a fireproof safe installed in my office to protect my most important files, namely the proprietary research that made Cuff's algorithm. I was in Austin the night of the fire, and when I returned, the safe, as promised, was perfectly preserved. Only it was empty. Meaning the files were stolen before the fire. Do you think the fire was to cover up the theft of your research? Potentially. Why didn't you just tell the police that? There were other things in my safe, things I didn't exactly want made public. Plus, why worry Dr. Wilson and your investors when you could just solve it yourself? And that, my dear, is exactly why you are in this course. See you in class. Hey, Simon. Cat. From Moynihan's class? Well, Kat from Moynihan's class. Enjoy it while it lasts. 